Hi, this is Sane from Sitecore and in this presentation we will learn the factors we should consider while enabling IntelliSense for Sitecore projects. We will also look at how to smartly configure IntelliSense for a scenario where we don't need source control. Enabling IntelliSense for Sitecore in Visual Studio is no different than what you have been already practicing. That is, add a reference, build and presto, it works for you. That's Visual Studio. But the way a Visual Studio project for Sitecore is configured, it adds a few more variables to the picture. These variables are if the solution is source controlled, your comfort level with Sitecore DLLs being overwritten again and again in the CMS root, and if you're lazy to add register directive for Sitecore.kernel. So let's look at the scenario where you don't need source control. It simply means you're most probably a single developer team doing a POC, a feature test or maybe a training. On the other hand, if you need source control, you have a team development scenario where a new developer will connect to source repository and with get latest, he should be on job as part of your team in no time as you need a team to develop a real life solution. The other variable is your comfort level with overwriting your site code DLLs in CMS root on each publish. The recommendation is to avoid overwriting of site code DLL by setting copy local equals to false on all the references of site code family assemblies. This ensures the CMS root at all the environment that is dev, QA, staging and production are kept isolated from accidental site code upgrades. And finally, if you are one of those who wish to experience the universal IntelliSense for Sitecore without registering Sitecore.kernel on each user control or web form, you need the web.configs. We will look at this in more depth during the demo. So let's go and look at a scenario with no source control. If source control is not required, then setting up IntelliSense for Sitecore project in a developer root is very quick and easy. This setup is suitable for single developer team doing a POC or a feature test or maybe trainings. Most importantly, you can avoid these steps involving copying of web.config to enable IntelliSense. If you're using Sitecore rocks or willing to type the register directive on web forms and user controls, you need not do the additional steps. You can easily zip and ship. Yes, the solution is portable. On the flip side, the no source control approach is not suitable for real life team development scenarios as you don't have the source control. There are two more optional considerations you may like to take note of. The first one is how comfortable you are with Sitecore assemblies being overwritten in the CMS root on each publish. You can set copy local to false on references to avoid overwriting. Setting copy local to false is recommended. The other optional setting is to support universal IntelliSense for Sitecore across the project. The web.config is optional and is only required if you don't like to register Sitecore.kernel on every web form or user control and wish to experience the universal Visual Studio IntelliSense for Sitecore. We will look at the configurations needed to get it going in the following demo. So let's launch our Visual Studio. Time for action. As you see, I have the same Sitecore 7 project open for me in Visual Studio that we did in the last video. If you are one of those who followed along, then you already have the Sitecore 7 project on your machine like me. In case you just began, please watch the video titled Creating Visual Studio Project Outside CMS Root from Developer Fundamentals Series on Sitecore CP Training YouTube channel, assuming that you know how to create and configure a Visual Studio project for Sitecore, we take our discussion forward. Let's do a bit of cleanup. Delete the reference to Sitecore.kernel. Click Show All. Delete the physical assembly from the bin folder that we dropped using Windows Explorer. Clean the solution. Build the solution. Just to ensure that we have a clean slate we will delete everything from reflected schemas Visual Studio folder. The reflected schema folder is where Visual Studio keeps the information for IntelliSense 
after reflecting the types. Observe the path carefully. You will find it under App Data Roaming Microsoft Visual Studio. The schemas are arranged as per Visual Studio number. Let's clean the IntelliSense cache for Visual Studio 2012. Next, let's delete sitecore.kernel from the CMS root of Sitecore 7 application. Look at my path. I am into the bin folder of Sitecore 7 website. We will delete sitecore.kernel. Deleting this will serve as a proof that publishing overrides the DLL available into the CMS root bin folder. So, our stage is set now. Let's go and give a proof for our approach. Right click on references, choose add reference, browse to your Sitecore assembly libraries. I have my library on D drive named as Sitecore 7 library. Choose sitecore.kernel, say add, say ok and we are good. Build, say refresh and you will see that sitecore.kernel along with all of its dependencies have been copied locally into the win folder. This is a result of copy local setting on sitecore.kernel reference. The copy local settings by default is set to true. That's why once you build you get the DLL and all of its dependencies copied into the bin folder. Let's try for IntelliSense. Click on the sub layout item, add a sitecore text control and as we see we get IntelliSense. The IntelliSense worked as you have the DLLs in the bin folder. Use web one click deploy to publish your project. The project got published successfully. In case you need to learn how to configure publish settings, please watch the video titled Creating Visual Studio Project Outside CMS Root from Developer Fundamental Series on Sitecore CEP Training YouTube channel. Let's observe our CMS Root. As we see, the sitecore.kernel that we deleted a little while ago has been recopied into the bin folder of Sitecore 7 website. In fact, Sitecore kernel.dll and all of its dependencies have overwritten the already existing files. We do not want this behavior. So let's improve for no assembly overwriting. We can overcome this by setting copy local to false on sitecore.kernel reference. So let's set the copy local to false. Let's build. Let's refresh and go to bin folder and we see that sitecore.kernel along with all of its dependencies are no longer available into the bin folder. Setting the copy local false doesn't copy the DLLs into the bin folder. As you guessed correctly, we no longer overwrite the DLLs on publishing. But as a side effect, we lost the IntelliSense. So how to solve it? The solution some people will give is to drop a DLL in the bin folder. Yes, that's correct. But then we need to use a little trick here. Copy the DLL from your library and drop it in the bin folder. And remember to exclude the file from project. And that's the most important key to avoid overwriting your existing DLLs and get the IntelliSense going. Let's cross check our IntelliSense once again. We will add an SC image control. And as you see, we have the IntelliSense in place. If the IntelliSense didn't work for you, you should try clearing the reflected schemas again. These are the minimum number of steps required to get the IntelliSense going for a sitecore project outside CMS root. Optionally, if you're one of those developer who wish to have universal IntelliSense for sitecore across the project, add a web.config. Say add. Next, we need to copy a few settings from the web.config available at Sitecore 7 CMS root. This is the web.config you need. I have this web.config open in another instance of Visual Studio. Please do notice the path. This is the path of Sitecore 7 website CMS root. Let's open the file and 
search for a tag called pages. We need these settings to enable universal sidecore intelligence. Copy and paste them back into the web.config we just created under system.web. Complete the missing pages node. Save. Build. Let's look at the settings. Although we just need the entries of sidecore assemblies, but it's okay to keep others as well. Most importantly, remember to set build action on web.config to none. This will ensure that this web.config is never included in the files to be published by Visual Studio. Effectively, it will never overwrite the web.config available at the Sitecore 7 CMS root level. Moreover, it is a developer setting required only in developer environment to enable the IntelliSense. Let's cross check that we have the universal IntelliSense for Sitecore available. We will add an SC image control to test if the IntelliSense works for us. And as you can see, we get the IntelliSense. In case the IntelliSense doesn't work for you, clean and rebuild your solution. You may also try cleaning the reflected schema folder created by Visual Studio to support IntelliSense. Save your project, build it again and it builds perfectly. If you're wondering why not copy the same web.config from CMS root, the answer is the web.config at CMS root level has dependency on connectionsync.config and moreover as a best practice we create our custom settings in separate config files and using transformation merge them to sidecore configs to avoid the risk of our settings being overwritten by sidecore upgrades. This leaves you thinking, hey wait, but what about portability? You told in the beginning that solution is portable. Yes, it is. Zip and ship. It will include the sidecore DLLs in the bin folder so it builds perfectly anywhere. It looks like an ideal project setup to test new features, build new capabilities, do POCs or possibly training. In the next presentation titled Creating a Visual Studio Project for Team Development in Sitecore, we will extend this project setup to support team development using source control. See you there. We welcome your comments and feedback on our YouTube channel Sitecore CP Training. Your wish, our command. Please share a topic or feature of your choice that you would like to learn next. Once again, I'm Sane from Sitecode. Thanks for watching.